I'm sure by this point you've heard about peptides. 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 And there are peptides for everything. Injury prevention, fat loss, growth hormone secretion, you name it. But if you're sitting there wondering what in the hell is a peptide? How do they work? And probably the most important question, are they legal? Let's dive in. Please don't f up my life. Let's first start out by going over exactly what a peptide is. They're simply a small chain of amino acids. And the reason they've become so popular recently is because for the most part, they avoid the negative feedback loop. What's the negative feedback loop? A good way to explain it is let's say you get your blood work done and find out you're a good candidate for growth hormone therapy. I know it's rare, but just follow me. Let's say your mom was on Accutane when she conceived you and you're one of those fish babies. If you were to take HGH, there's more potential side effects due to the fact it's an exogenous hormone. It's created outside the body, therefore skips over your body's natural feedback mechanisms, which prevent excessive hormone levels. That's why there's been so much negativity around GH therapies because excessive growth hormone levels have been linked to certain types of cancer. The peptide version does not have this problem. They act as secretagogues, stimulating your body to produce more growth hormone. And again, they're just amino acids. So if they're not used for the direct purpose of stimulating, your body will use them someplace else. Amino acids, it's like BCAs for adults. Now, peptides are by no means some new thing. And if you haven't heard of them by now, there's a reason for that. You have no friends. Because if this is 2023, and right around here is where Lex Luger saved America by slamming Yokozuna, and all the way back here is when the first peptide was discovered in 1921, insulin and if you didn't know that that's okay because neither did i because i don't have any friends either it's just me and my thick wife i only recently started paying attention to peptides since derek exposed the liver king and showed that list of things he was taking to which my response was a little bit different than everybody else everybody else was shocked i was not that guy was guzzling down bull dicks all day of course he's gonna put everything under the sun in his body but there was stuff on that list some peptides that i'd never heard of and doing research on them after they're pretty phenomenal. So let's go over some of the things I've learned and highlight some of the ones I'm most excited about. Starting off with growth hormone secretagogues. And these fall into two categories. You got your ghrelin agonists and your GHRH analogs. But before we jump into these, you need to know why it's important your growth hormone levels continue to fall in a normal range as you age. It's because they've done a meta-analysis looking at 54 original parallel randomized placebo-controlled trials with over 3,400 participants, looking at the difference between GH deficit people versus those that have been supplemented and found that people with a growth hormone deficit had a statistically significant, fatter, less muscled, and overall lower quality life. I know, right? Sucks. So we have these two different categories of growth hormone stimulating peptides that work in very different ways. The question is, which one should you use? Or if you're working with a clinician, which one are you hoping they prescribe you? And if they're any good, the answer is both. It's because your body's natural production of growth hormone is caused by either ghrelin, which is mostly located in your stomach, making its way up to your ball sack looking pituitary gland, where through a series of fortunate events, it synthesizes and secretes more growth hormone. That's, that's a fucking G. Or your hypothalamus releases GHRH, which attaches to its receptor on the pituitary gland, synthesizing and releasing more growth hormone. Better. So, by introducing both the ghrelin agonist and GHRH, we're going to get, obviously, a more substantial release, but more important than that, a physiological release pattern that mimics our own. Can you believe this is what I was trying to draw? I should not have made it this far. I sit on my own balls at least once a day. You also might have heard of this one, MK677. And this one is interesting because it too is a ghrelin agonist, but in a pill form. And I talked to a few doctors about this and asked, why would you recommend this one over the other ones? Ease of use. Most people don't want to stab themselves with insulin syringe three times a day, but they'll take a pill. With that being said, it doesn't come without side effects. It increases your appetite. So you run the risk of being that guy at the gym that you can't tell if he's getting more muscular or he's just getting fatter. So let me give you my experience so far because I've noticed two major things. The first one being my muscles are always fuller and rounder. I know it's hard to tell because for some reason this is the first day I decided to wear a shirt that fits me. Hold on. The second major thing I've noticed is the quality of my sleep. Subjectively, I wake up and I feel more rested, but objectively, when I'm not a lazy piece of shit and I take my shot before bed, I've noticed my HRV score is higher. Pair that with the mouth taping I've been doing, my sleep has been phenomenal. I just put this here for a chair, but I realize probably everybody's freaking out wondering if this is Bud Light. 
it is not. If you're sitting there wondering why I'm sharing all this, I look at this channel a little bit differently. If there's something new that I'm excited about, I'm gonna share it with you. It's like growing up, if I had an older brother and he took me under his wing and let me borrow a few of his slammers and showed me the ropes, that's what I want this to be. And technically I did have an older brother, but he sucked, so whatever. Next up, let's go over what people have dubbed the Wolverine stack. BPC-157, a synthetic version of a naturally occurring protein found in the stomach that protects against tissue damage and improves tendon and ligament healing. TB-500, a synthetic version of a naturally occurring peptide, thymosin beta-4, anti-inflammatory, improves wound healing. Now, I know most people won't get excited about the idea of a recovery-based peptide, but anybody who's been training for a long time will tell you the most important thing to make sure you continue to make progress is consistency. Nothing will screw you and make you want to punch your wife in the neck like an injury. From my own personal experience, I crushed the C6 to C7 disc in my neck, as well as had bulges from C2 to C3 all the way up to C5 to 6. I was a little screwed up. Ended up causing horrible pain in my left trap and then nerve damage where I couldn't fire my left tricep or left pec and even palsy in my serratus anterior. A complete dumpster fire. It appears they somehow got a picture of my asshole. Uh, that's my mouth. Okay. The thing that saved me was those two peptides. I'd lost an inch on my left arm. I physically could not do a dip because my left side was dead and I hated my life. I know it sounds crazy, but within two weeks, I saw a noticeable difference. I could actually start firing those muscles again. And today it's fine. Life doesn't suck. So let's get into the laws surrounding peptides because it is as gray as it gets. Technically, you can Google and find your peptide site and buy as many as you want because they're labeled research chemicals, but you can't legally take them. Even ChatGPT had no idea why that was. It just falls under the FDA, but there is no actual law. It's a subcategory of research chemicals, but it isn't really actually stated firmly on their site. Who knows? What I'm saying is I can't exactly knock you if you buy them that way because I've done it. My situation is a little bit different because I have a nurse practitioner in the family, so we can draw blood and do labs whenever we want. And she can advise me on what to take. But even that, in terms of the law, technically, probably frowned upon. So what I'm going to do going forward, because I basically just outed myself and I don't want somebody to kick down my door. What I'm going to do is what I recommend anybody who's interested in peptides do. Reach out to an online HRT clinic. I know Derek has one. There's one called Titan. The one I'm going to use is called Ways to Well, just because I reached out to the founder and he was incredibly helpful with this video. Lastly, let me give you a little update on semaglutide because I made a whole video about it, so I'm not gonna run through the specifics of it, but it works too well. I've had to back down to half a milligram once a week, still take it. I've gotten a couple family members who are type two diabetes and it works incredibly well. And for anybody in the comments that's freaking out, oh my God, you're taking it from all the diabetic people. It's not how it works. There's the semaglutide version, which is the peptide version and the pharmaceutical version. They're two different things. Don't be dumb. As always, programs are linked in the description. They're all only 20 bucks for 30 days. And I don't care how in shape you are, they're going to kick your ass.